and heavy. This is a day of shock and heartbreak here across our campus and our region. It's something that's quite unimaginable, but has been imagined in other places and other times, but we just can't imagine that it's here. We're devastated at the loss of life, and we want to wrap our warm arms around every family that is touched by this tragedy and give them the peace that passeth understanding in moments like this. Our campus grieves. We will all grieve. And we will change over time. We cannot allow this to continue to happen again. I want to thank the ASMSU president and the ASMSU and our faculty senate and their leadership for their leadership throughout this event today, to our police, to all of those in the East Lansing, Lansing area, to the governor, to our senators, and all of the folks who have reached out to make sure that we at MSU know that they are standing by our side. To our students, we will take two days where we will move to emergency operation to give ourselves time to think and to grieve and to be together. To our faculty and staff, we will similarly provide to all of you the next two days to think and grieve and come together. And this Spartan community, this family, will come back together. Tomorrow morning at the Hannah Center, beginning at 9 a.m., resources will be available for members of our family who want to reach out there. We have CAPS and EAP that will be available for our students and faculty as well. There is little else that can be said other than we are a community that is knit together by each other, and we will hold each other up. In moments of grief, as well as celebration, but today we come together as a family, and we grieve together. I wanna thank Mayor Andy Shore and the other members of our community for standing with us, and Mayor Shore has a few words that he'd like to bring. Tonight has been horrific. It's been horrific for all of the students here uh, and around the region. Schools have been closed. This has affected our whole region, our whole community. It's affected families, everyone across our community. And I say community because tonight our entire region came together. We have law enforcement, we have firefighters and EMS, we have healthcare and first responders from all over mid-Michigan, from all over Michigan, who answered the call and rushed to campus to help. I've been in constant contact with Mayor Ron Bacon of East Lansing, who is at the police station. Um, he, he wants to be here, but he has been in the police station um, coordinating along with, with my chief, along with state police, along with the county and, and several others. Um, we know that now we have to come together to heal. Lansing will provide resources in conjunction with Michigan State University and East Lansing and others. It's time for us to provide the resources that our families need, our residents need. I've heard from residents and families all throughout the city of Lansing in addition to East Lansing and from all over Michigan. We will come together and we will heal and we will move forward together as a community. I'm going to pass it back to um, Deputy Chief and he will share more information from law enforcement. Thank you, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Rosman. I'm the Deputy Chief at Michigan State University Police and Public Safety. Over my right shoulder is our Vice President for Public Safety and Chief of Police, Marlon Lynch. 
And I want to start by saying that we have been committed to being as transparent as possible and sharing as much information as we can since the start of this horrific incident. I stand before you with a, a, a few minor updates um, that we'll provide, and then we will open it up for a couple questions. Please keep in mind that there's not much new information that we have since we last uh, had a briefing about an hour ago. I will start by sharing an update that the five victims that were transported to the hospital were transported to Sparrow Hospital in Lansing. All five of those victims remain in critical condition. I will also share that the incident that occurred off campus with the suspect occurred in the city of Lansing, off campus. That suspect is, um, we now know, is a 43-year-old male. That 43-year-old male is not affiliated in any way with Michigan State University. He's not a student, faculty, staff. And we have no idea why he came to campus to do this uh, tonight. That is part of our ongoing investigation. As the president said, we know this news it is so difficult for those within our campus community and beyond. It's important to remember that the grief some individuals may be experiencing is normal, and there are a number of ways that individuals can seek support, including talking with friends, families, and colleagues. After this briefing, we will be sharing supportive resources through our uh, police and public safety, social media pages that we've been asking people to follow, as well as the university uh, communications, highlighting other resources that are available in addition to the event tomorrow at the Hannah Community Center. Chief, you? Yes. Just a, a reminder that this is an ongoing investigation that will involve multiple agencies that are currently uh, here on campus and maybe some based on expertise that will also assist in the future. This is a process, it will take some time. I know we all want answers, and we'll, we, as soon as we have them, we will share them. Um, that is something that will uh, occur over the next few days, immediately. Uh, we will continue to have these updates uh, with our community, as well as with our uh, media moving forward with it. It's a process, the answers will come, um, hopefully what has been shared to this point um, is enough to assist in what we are all trying to do, which is to recover at this point. The next couple of days, as you've heard from President Woodruff and also Deputy Chief Rosman in regards to resources that will be available by those that are impacted. Um, if you witness people that need assistance, please speak up. Encourage them to seek help. Sometimes they're just unable to do it alone. And sometimes they just need to have a little, little assistance to get them going with that. Those resources will be available. Uh, we will now take questions. Other than the eight who were shot, three fatally, five who were in the hospital, are there any other victims connected? Yeah, to our knowledge, there are only eight total uh, victims in this case, uh, three that are um, deceased and five at the hospital. Yes. Do you have any updates on the surgical status of these victims? Uh, have, are they in surgery now? Have they come out? So we do not have those specific updates. What we were told by Sparrow Hospital is that they remain in critical condition. Uh, we may have future updates, uh, more specific updates in the morning uh, as we coordinate that information with the uh, Sparrow Health System. Are they confirmed students, faculty members? Yeah, so we are still working to fully identify uh, all of the victims that are involved in this case. And if they have affiliation to our university, um, we will continue to, um, we will continue to, to pursue that and we will share that information as, as soon as we are able to. Please understand that behind every victim is a family and our loved ones and we need to be respectful to that. And so 
Um, we will share information as soon as possible regarding the uh, identity of those victims, especially the deceased, and any affiliation that they may have had with, with Michigan State University. Without identifying, can you just characterize what their age range is? I don't currently have that information. Our, our investigators have that information. We're still processing it and working through it. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to uh, put that information together uh, and share more details. Over here. Just trying to confirm, uh, you are, uh, Michigan State Police will be co conducting the investigation, coordinating it, not another agency? So it'll be a collaborative process with that. Uh, we, we do have uh, ability to partner. We will do that in a circumstance like this. The preference is for those agencies that have the uh, resources and expertise at this level, um, they will take the lead on that particular uh, step in the investigation. Uh, we are, this happened here, uh, we are the primary law enforcement agency. We will be involved every step of the way. But when you have resources like we do um, locally, at the state level and at the federal level, we are going to take advantage of those resources and utilize them. Yes, sir. Was the suspect found dead, or was there some sort of contact with the police? So, so again, we're still working through the investigation. Our understanding is that the suspect was confronted by law enforcement. Yes. Is the home surrounded in North Lansing right now the home of the suspect? I cannot confirm or share any information about that right now. Uh, there are several parts of the investigation, including the suspect's residence, um, where he where he lived that are part of that investigation. I'm not able to share that at this time. In front. Was the suspect the Lansing resident? I cannot confirm residency status of the suspect at this time. Is there any update on the weapon that was used? No, we, we do not have a, a current update in terms of the, the, the weapon type that was used. Um, that will be part of our investigation, obviously. Um, and we'll work through that. Uh, we will share that information when we are able to. Please understand that we may have initial information. Before we share that, we, we want to make sure it's accurate. And so that's part of that process that we're working through with the investigation is confirming the accuracy of information, which is why we want to be, uh, be mindful of that as we share um, information. Good. Can you confirm um, what the suspect had on them at the time of backpack, more ammunition, another weapon? I cannot, I cannot confirm what the suspect had on him at the time of the incident off campus. All I can confirm is um, what he was wearing and had on him uh, on campus in the photograph that we released during the incident. Yes, sir. Um, could you tell me more about how the suspect was contacted by police as mentioned in the previous presser? So I, I cannot offer any additional information in terms of why law enforcement contacted that suspect. What I can say is that with the overwhelming response of law enforcement officers that we had from across the state, we began to deploy those resources out in different perimeter zones in different waves. And all of those officers were looking for this particular suspect that we identified very quickly um, with, a, with a photograph that was shared with all of the officers in the field. So there were hundreds of officers that were looking for this individual what led the officers to come across him and contact him, we will determine that. That will be part of our investigation, but I'm not able to share that at this point. In the back. Can you describe um, the residence hall? Is it like a security swipe card system to get in? Do you have any idea about that? And if you could just talk to the monumental tasks that you guys had, large campus, dark outside, just um, how you went about the work. Sure. I'll take the first part of the access and I'll turn it over to the chief um, for the monumental task ahead. The two buildings in question, Berkey Hall is a academic building. It's a, a purely academic building. Uh, there's no residence. It's not a residence hall facility. That building is uh, unlocked and open to the public uh, during, uh, during business hours, if you will. This incident did occur before the building was secured overnight. Um, and to my knowledge, there were activities occurring in that building as part of the academic function of the university. The second building, the MSU Union, is similarly open to the general public. 
uh, does not require any special access. It's a building that is open not only to students, faculty, staff, but to the general public. Uh, and that building was open at the time. It does have hours where it closes. This occurred during the hours that the building was open. And I'll turn it over to the chief for the second part. And, and that's part of the monumental task, right? We do have uh, areas that are accessible to the public with that. The task in itself is that we have 400 buildings on campus and over 5,300 acres with that. And part of the process of the response that we had is that we were able to uh, divide and organize to be methodical in the search process with that to obtain evidence and to share it as it come through. But with a, a university of our size and the areas that we're responsible for, um, that becomes a task with that. And it's also as part of what we try to establish here as a culture is that we all in some way are accountable to each other uh, for safety and things of that nature with it. The, the questions that you were starting to get to with the access control and things of that nature, those are in the, the residence halls and components like that that are not open to the general public. But the facilities where this actually occurred um, at the time it was open, open to the public. Do you know how long the suspect was on campus prior to the first shooting occurring and if they had been on campus at all previously? I do not have that information currently. How long the suspect was on campus before he entered Berkey Hall, the location of the first uh, incident, is not known at this time, but that is something that our investigators will be interested in and will be following up on, but I don't have that right now in the back. These public buildings, are you aware if any kind of safety mechanisms were inside, like Medlock, anything like that? So, so we do have a, a, a robust and comprehensive uh, safety plan on campus. Like the chief said, we have a lot of buildings, and every building is uh, built differently, constructed diff differently, but we have assessed, uh, and we continue to assess our security features within those buildings. Um, in this instance today, we relied very heavily on our notification systems. Uh, we know that during an incident involving an active shooter, that providing clear instructions to the community in terms of actions to take is very important. And that's why we pushed the information out very quickly that there was an incident occurring um, to shelter in place, to run, hide, fight. Uh, and we implemented the training that, that we have had in place, the emergency plans that we have had in place, and we instituted the training that not only the officers had, but that we've trained our community uh, how to respond to an incident like this as well. So it's hard to talk about specific physical security features of a, a particular building uh, down the road after this incident. That obviously is something that we will look at, and if there's ways to improve, we will look to improve. Um, but right now, we're really focused on the, the immediate response and the immediate aftermath to this tragedy. I can go over here. Can I just ask the President real quick? When you first found out that there was a shooting on the campus, what went through your mind? Well, I first tried to get the information. So uh, it was critical to me that, uh, that I have accurate information. Uh, and then my, my thoughts immediately went to the individuals who had been shot and their families and the students around them. And I, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is on a campus this side, size, how quickly every student, staff, faculty member immediately took action. They sheltered in place and they did so for hours in order to allow our law enforcement um, to come together and quickly be able to survey the campus and set up the perimeters that were described. So my thoughts immediately went to those individuals who uh, were in that room, in that classroom, and um, my prayers went to heaven. Yeah, so just to be clear, the initial calls were only Berkey Hall and the Union. Um, after the suspect left the Union, we did receive um, multiple uh, erroneous reports of several either shooting incidents or incidents across campus at different locations. Um, 
Obviously, that's going to be part of the investigation in terms of where those phone calls came from and who placed them. Um, at this point, I can't offer any specifics, but that is something that we're very interested to determine and will be a, one of the, the focal points of the investigation to see if, if that's related uh, in any way. Go ahead. How many reports, other reports were there that weren't true or were false? I don't have a specific number, but we did have uh, numerous, um, I'll, I'll say more than five, um, reports of either individuals hearing shots uh, on campus that, that never occurred or reporting a shooting that occurred at a different location. Um, we immediately, due to the resources that we had at hand that were being deployed under a uh, unified incident command structure, we dispatched uh, teams to each of those calls and they quickly arrived uh, and quickly determined that, that re the incident as reported did not occur at that location. But I can't emphasize enough that even though we were dealing with two different scenes, we continued to utilize our resources, our, our law enforcement partners, uh, to actively um, ensure the safety of the rest of campus at that point. Do you know if there's any uh, security footage or surveillance footage that uh, so we, we obviously do have surveillance footage because we quickly released one of the images. Um, that image that we were able to quickly capture uh, and quickly disseminate to the public. And we can't thank the community enough for uh, receiving that information and, um, and, and helping us to, to um, locate that, that suspect. So yes, we do have cameras in, in a lot of buildings on campus. Um, each, each building has a separate uh, system in place. But yes, I mean, there, there are surveillance cameras that are gonna be useful and helpful in this investigation that will aid our investigators in putting the pieces together and uh, trying to understand um, a little bit more about what happened, uh, what happened. We'll take one more question. Go ahead, Nick. Next 24, 48 hours, what can we expect the university to look like for students and staff that are still going to be here? What kind of presence? You'll still see a continued presence um, due to the fact that we, we do have uh, crime scenes that will still be processed with that. Uh, there will be the ongoing investigation of communicating with witnesses as well on campus. Um, There'll be a lot of activity in regards to support for our community, as was mentioned earlier, with uh, our counseling services, our health services. Uh, there will be notifications that will be made for where those will uh, actually gather or take place along those lines. Um, you, we made the announcement that 48 hours, um, it will, the operations of the university will change. It does not mean that our campus will become vacated. Uh, we have approximately 19,000 students that reside on campus. Um, we will still have things available to meet their needs as well. Um, I can't say that it'd be business as usual because it's not. It's not going to be business as usual. Um, healing will begin as soon as possible with it. There will be a continued police presence during that time frame as well. But we'll have ongoing communications into what we're doing and why we're doing it. So um, we will definitely be here, and, and this, is, this is our campus. It's for our community and for specific purposes, and we'll overcome it. Thank you. Thank you. It, I'll close by saying that we will hold another um, news conference in the morning. We will announce that time once we uh, confirm the time. It'll be right here. We'll continue to use this location and we'll announce that time um, to gather back here in the morning to share additional information. If there's any uh, updates that we can provide before that, we will continue to, to provide updates. So, thank you. Do we have an approximate time? Between eight and nine? Do we have a time? Eight, eight or nine, we're still 